Ryan. But the theory I have today goes to the heart of this game, addressing the one character that we spend a lot of time with, but don't actually see all that much. And that's our main character of Security Breach, Gregory. But we all know that she ends up dead. Who is Gregory? What is Gregory? And why is he such a cold-hearted savage to Roxy and the rest of the animatronic gang? I'm so mad that you're driving without my permission! <laughs> oh my gosh! Gregory! is brutal. My friends, the answers to those questions will recontextualize everything that you thought you knew about this series. So let's begin. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that can't help but stuff its face with FNAF lore like Chica stuffs her face with pizza and garbage. I guess at this point it kind of applies to us too. The relationship between Gregory and Glamrock Freddy. What's the deal with this random kid and why is a killer animatronic suddenly trying to help him? Like seriously, the game kicks off with this incredible cutscene. Everyone is living their best 80s-tastic lives on stage before Freddy suddenly glitches out and smash cut to Gregory just being there, I guess. It is one of the weirdest, most jarring intros to a game ever. And then from that point forward, we're just expected to assume that everything is perfectly normal, no explanations necessary. So I'm here to give you that explanation, because I strongly suspect that this by just leaving the building at 6am, we see Gregory winding up in an alleyway sleeping in a cardboard box. He appears to be homeless. He's an orphan. This then explains a few other things that we see around the pizza plex. In a couple of hidden locations around the building, we find little dens that are filled with drawings, plushies, and beds. The most notable one being the one behind the daycare center. Gregory seems to be living inside the pizza plex, which would explain his lack of a guest pass. We can't even be sure that his name is Gregory. In the game's opening scene, Gregory has no issues speaking to Freddy. Will you shut up? Who said that? I did. However, once Freddy asks him for his name, he stutters. I... Uh, I'm... Gregory. Why would he stutter on his name when he was clearly fine answering everything else just seconds before? So... What? Is that it? Gregory's just some homeless kid that sets up shop in the pizza plex and happens to get wrapped up in Afton and Vanny's plans? Yeah, right. Of course not. Nothing in this franchise is ever an accident. Take a look at Gregory here. Notice anything familiar? Dark eyes, brown hair with a piece falling between his eyes, shorts, a shirt with two stripes across the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, Gregory is none other than the crying child. Don't believe me? Early on we get this weird moment when Freddy suddenly stops what he's doing and says this. I feel you are broken. We all know that the language in this franchise is never chosen by accident. Everything is meticulously crafted, so is it a coincidence then that the word broken is only used one other time in the FNAF series to describe a child? That iconic FNAF 4 clip with crying child and golden Fredbear, you're broken, we're still your friends, I will put you back together. The fact that both crying child and Gregory look alike and are considered to be broken screams of a connection existing between these two. Him being the crying child would also explain why he has nowhere else to go. His dad is an undead zombie living inside a yellow bunny suit, and his mom is M.I.A. There's also lines like this. Your parents want you to follow me. Your family is looking for you. Let me take you to your parents. On one hand, this just sounds like Chica spouting out some generic security protocol. On the other, him to his family, his father living in the basement, William Afton. But obviously there's one big problem with this, one that I'm sure all of you are screaming at your monitors or typing aggressively down in the comments. Crying child is dead. He died in FNAF 4 when his older brother Michael picked him up to be chomped. And not only did he die, his soul then went on to be one of the two spirits possessing Golden Freddy, the other being the vengeful spirit Cassidy, before he was finally put to rest by the puppet in the happiest day ending of FNAF 3. This kid is well and truly gone. He is removed from the franchise. He is one of the few